Welcome to In the Mix of Chaos MMA. Today we're going to go ahead and talk about UFC uh, on Fox number four. My name is Hector Gomez, and this is... Hey, what's up? It's Kenny. And uh, he's joining us by Skype for the first one. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and go down the picks right now. And um, so we'll go probably from the lower fights on down or on up. So um, let me see. The big ones that I wanted to talk to, I guess, is, um, let me see, Jamie Varner's going to be fighting Joe Loazzo, and I think that one's probably going to be on Fuel. Did you see that one? Yeah, yeah. And my pick for that one's probably going to be Joe Loazzo on that one. What is yours? Yeah, I I have to agree. I'm going to have to go with Joe Loazzo on that. I mean, I think think Jamie Varner can make a fight out of it, but... um, I mean, I think it was just a bad matchup for Edson Barboza. Jamie Varner came out and took advantage of that. Yeah. He didn't beat Edson Barboza the way that I was expecting him to. Mm-hmm. But for him to go from where he was, barely being able to rack up wins at the UFC, to suddenly being a pick him with Joe Lowe's on it, I mean, I don't buy it. <laughs> and I don't want to give, like, nothing taken away from, uh, from Jamie Varner because he was the WEC champion at one time, but... I don't see it going. The interesting one I forgot to bring is it's probably one of the small little prelim ones, and it's uh, John Morana who's going to do his introduction. But it's uh, he's fighting Ulysses Gomez, or Useless Gomez. And uh, for people that don't know this fight, uh, it was actually Ian McCall that was supposed to fight this fight, and I guess he broke his hand. And Ulysses is uh, fighting. I don't know if you ever saw Ulysses when he fought at uh, – like he was the current – or I think he's still the current champion for That's the Palace. Valid. Yeah. yeah, so uh, did you have any thoughts on that one? Uh, you know what? I my uh, my knowledge of of John Moraga is limited. Um, I think that this is probably a, an opportunity for this government to shine as human fight. Uh, I think I mean, this game uh, coming out of the Taxi Palace fight. I mean, it is it is a local kind of feeder circuit, but yeah. uh, they really shine with with their lighter weight fight. Yeah. yeah, and it's interesting. That's like one of the lower fights, and then Manny Gambarian versus, uh, oh man, this is going to be a tough one. Meet uh, Hiro Akigama. Okay, yeah. Yeah. And I haven't seen, uh, I've seen Manny, but I've never seen the other guy fight before. I don't know if he's a new introduction to the UFC or not. Uh, uh, no, uh, Mitchell Hiro Omigawa has uh, a little bit of a history with the UFC. Uh, here's the thing if, if you just Look at this one on paper. Michihiro Michihiro Omigawa's record is is gonna lead a lot of people to believe this guy's gonna get blown out of the water. And honestly, I'm not on the Michihiro Omigawa bandwagon. Mm-hmm. He's very he's very underrated. He has it's a pretty bad record. And 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 his second welcoming back into the UFC, I mean, it was just a trial by fire, man. Yeah. I mean, his his first fight back in the UFC after you know his, his long tenure in Japan, where he, he kind of uh, Built yep. this record back up and got back on the winning streak. Yeah, I'm Just looking at it right back. now, and it's uh, what 13 and 11 and one draw. Yeah, and yeah. well, Manny's not that good either. It's 11 and uh-huh. seven. So. Yeah, and they welcomed him back with with a Chad Mendes, and that dip, that definitely didn't help his record. I don't. Um, it, yeah, I I necessarily don't like Manny Gambarian because he has that. I don't. He has that. Um, he tends to carry that left hand really low, and uh-huh. that's where he gets usually caught up with a, you know, an uppercut or so. If he's he's going on the South Paul di- uh, direction, he'll get usually knocked out. Uh-huh. I've noticed that a lot with that Manny Gambarian, but the guy's a beast. Once he If he gets you on the ground, the guy's a beast. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think Manny Gambarian's going to give him trouble. Um, it, it is a little bit of a pick because like I said, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not big on the Mitchell Hero and Miguel bandwagon. There's still a lot of people who shout that he's, he's really underrated. Um, but I, I really think this is going to be a loser to leave town fight. Um, Manny Gambarian might have a little bit more staying power. He's yeah. really exciting. Um, I think if, if uh, Michihario Magawa fights, fights smart and lets Manny kind of burn out a little bit and takes him to the later round, it's his, it's his fight to lose, really. Um, but like I said, I, I do think that he'll be letting Michihiro go if, if he doesn't come out with a W. Uh, what do I have on your thoughts on the Mike Swift versus uh, 
Demarcus Johnson. For somebody who doesn't know who Mike Swift is, he was out of the UFC for basically almost two years because he had a lot of, uh, I guess, um, throat issues or the digestive part of the uh, digestive tract on the top part. He had a lot of issues, and so he had to gracefully bow out of the UFC for a while. Um, and he lost his last two fights, but they said because he was switching and going back from he was um, switching from weight divisions and it wasn't necessarily his choice it was because of the issues he had that he had to lower his uh you know go to a different weight class yeah definitely and i mean this guy suffered with a lot more injuries yeah i mean he's, he's had torn in the so. oh yeah he had the surgery too yeah um so I mean, too much too soon for quick swing uh and paulo thiago is no joke i mean paulo thiago has been on the losing of things lately but uh i think that Mike Swig might have been looking past him a little bit back when he fought him back in 2010. Um, in this fight, I, it's really hard to say. He hasn't, you know, he hasn't fought in over two years what he's going to look like. Yeah. Um, and there's al- really. always that thing where people talk about that ring rust, so we don't know if that might be an actual issue with this fight as well. And, I, yeah, I mean, I don't know if he's going to come with the quickness, stick with the stickness, you know. I don't know if Demarcus Johnson is going to be guy for him to shake the ring rust off it again because I think the market is going to put smart where he's wrestling and he has that skill set and uh, he's, he's going to probably put Mike Swick in the grinder and I, I don't see the market shot from the head hunting for Swick I mean, for what he's known for which I mean Swick's kind of good at everything but he's not necessarily a specialist in any one area area So before we get to the two main cards, is there any cards that you see on here that you would like to say anything about or who you're actually excited to see other than the ones that we already spoke about? Uh, let me think. I know that I wanted to drop some game on Mr. Wonderful Phil Davis. Oh, Phil and Davis and Prado. Yeah, Wagner Prado. Um, I think that this is an interesting fight to talk about because it's, uh, it's kind of frustrating. I think that Wagner Prado is is kind of I mean obviously it's his first fight in the UFC yeah. he's going to come in relatively unknown he's, he's Team Noguera um, this guy's got good kickboxing but it, we're not going to see any of that <laughs> you know what I mean and it looks like they're using uh, Phil Davis as kind of the gatekeeper for this uh, for his introduction of this one to see where he actually stands because Phil Davis is a good fighter but you know the, the last recent loss he lost really bad as well and looked kind of sluggish yeah, well, just think, I, I'm not sure if they're gonna if they're using him as a gatekeeper at this point as much as they're going back to groom Bill Davis. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And and kind of build him up, kind of like they should have. I, I really think that they uh, they threw him in there with Rashad Evans too fast. And, yeah, and, that was yeah. that was probably one of the worst fights I saw <laughs> of this year. Yeah, Dude, it, it, it was a beautiful display of technical wrestling. And yeah, surprisingly on on on. Uh, Rashad Evans then. You know, I like a lot of what I saw in Rashad Evans. And usually, Rashad Evans, I don't really think he works his wrestling to his best advantage. You know, a lot of times, he, he, he's the kind of guy who tries to shoot for a power double and gets, gets clinched up against the fence and just doesn't fall through. Somehow, I, Mr. Mr. Wonderful brought out the just friggin' technician in Rashad Evans in that fight. But, um, I think that his hands have a long way to go. He's a specialist. Phil Davis is Special. And that is, he's a, he's a wrestling stand up. He's an outstanding wrestler. And I think that they need to give him a chance to really get comfortable with his hands. Uh, I mean, they'll, they'll, the guys want to talk a lot. You know, you have Joe Rogan on the side saying, you know, his hands are coming along. And really, I think they're just trying to groom him into being a John Jump because they have, you know, some similarities. That, you know, they're, they're both really good wrestlers. And yeah. I think they just wanted to kind of fast forward him into being talking about him like he's, you know, the second time, you know what I mean? He's another one of these guys. He's one of the young guys coming up. He's a phenom, you know what I mean? But he needs more time to develop his hand. And um, the, the funny thing about it is I think they're going back to grooming him at this fight. They're not rushing him anymore. They're giving him a, a, a newcomer in, in Wagner Prado. But funny enough is, I mean, he's not really going to get a chance to work his hands against Wagner. I really think if he wants to fight smart against Wagner Prado, he's going to want to take him down because 
Yeah. Prado, yeah, Prado can throw leather. Prado can throw some serious leather. You know, so I think we're going to see a one-sided fight. We're going to see Bill Davis come out and do what he should do to win this fight, but we're not really going to get to see the kind of progress that we're going to want to see from a prospect like Bill Davis. Yeah, and um, now that we spoke about um, John Bones Jones, the uh, current lightweight champ, light heavyweight champion of the thing, uh, the two main bouts are, um, the first one I guess we'll discuss is Leota Machida versus Ryan Bader, both of them who had a has, has a loss from John Bones Jones. And um, where do you see this one? Leo Machida and Ryan Bader. Yeah. Um, well, I, I think that it's, it's Leo Machida's fight. Um, I, I, I'm picking Machida. You th- you're taking uh, Machida? You know what? I'm going to have to go with you on that one. I, I like Ryan Bader. I mean, he has that one solid, um, you know, power where he can knock you out with one punch. Uh-huh. But... Like, Lyoto's very different style of fighting. He's very elusive. So I don't see, you know, Ryan able to, you know, catch him and actually pound him out like he's planning. I mean, Ryan Bader's is probably his whole goal for this fight is probably going to try to take him down to the ground or knock him out. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, Ryan Bader, uh, almost, I, I guess you can draw some comparisons to uh, a Bill Davis. I mean, mm-hmm. um, uh, really, actually, what I always think about when I think about Ryan Bader and kind of the uh, ev- line of evolution that he's trying to take into becoming a, a well-rounded mixed martial artist, I, I tend to draw comparisons between him and Josh Koscheck. Yeah. Because I mean, there's a there's a formula there. Uh, they both came out as you know came out of the gates as, as big wrestling standouts. I mean, I never really watched the Ultimate Fighter, but I understand that both. I mean, I know Josh Koscheck came out of the Ultimate. Yeah, he he uh, was a uh, Koscheck was came out of the Ultimate Fighter. Uh, Bader was actually the winner of the Ultimate Fighter. Uh-huh. So he was one of the more recent. Uh, yeah, like, I, I never watched any of them. Um, so um, yeah, and, and I think the, the thing about Bader is he's a little bit of a victim of his division. In yeah. a in a division like welterweight, Koscheck kind of figured out a formula, and I mean it, it wasn't a secret. I mean it's something Chuck Liddell was doing for years. Mm-hmm. That he came out of, of like a wrestling powerhouse, and he can he just had natural power in his hands, and he just needed to shape it. Um, to Josh Koscheck, boxing ability is still not gonna make anyone you know swoon if you, you come from a pure boxing background. Yeah. But the thing is, I mean, for the most part, he has crazy power, and if you don't employ enough evasive footwork, he's gonna find your chin. And this, I see Bader trying to go the same route, but I think he's a bit of a victim of his division because at light heavyweight, there's a lot more guys who will bang with Bader and will make him pay for trying to, you know, fall in love with his hand when he really doesn't have the striking acumen to hang with other guys at light heavyweight. Um, so, I don't know. I, I think he's, he's going to come along soon. and He can fight more guys like Rampage who can threaten him, but mm-hmm. we'll still give him a chance to work his hands like he did. Um, not that that fight was fireworks, but um, I think Bader can come along. He's just going to have a lot more trouble employing that kind of style and the light heavyweight division. Um, so, and, and I definitely don't think that it's going to pay off for him against Leo Machida. Yeah. If there's anyone who's going to employ good invasive footwork and really, you know, utilize head movement, it's going to make he's going to get right Bader. Thing. And people have seem to forget that the last fight the Leota fought was actually the John's Bones one, and um, after that he was on a huge winning streak. I mean, he did that uh, that crane kick on uh, Randy Couture before yeah. all that. So you know he has he doesn't have a lot of losses, and he's actually up there for an idol, another title contention with uh, John Bones Jones, and that's probably something I would like to see just because when Leota Machida fought uh, John Bones, he was actually winning it. The first round before he actually got uh, submitted. Yeah, I, I was kind of excited for that. Um, yeah, Leota, Leota seemed to be finding success until uh, John Jones kind of cracked the puzzle, I guess you could say, um, or you know, he, he kind of threw it into wrestling mode a little bit, started to hold him down. And just, I guess he finally started to cut off the octagon and mm-hmm. really hold Machida, like not really let him just take the distance of the fight. Um, I think that, uh, well, first of all, what do you think of the title implications in this in kind of impromptu, unofficial four-man tournament? I mean, we, basically, 
we have, we have four guys who all got the floor mopped by, <laughs> by John Jones. Uh, who, do you, who do you think rises? What, what cream do you think rises to the top? Not necessarily who do you think will actually come out with the title shot, but mm-hmm. who do you think has the best chance? Well, you know? that's, that's the interesting thing about uh, when I'm looking at this fight is they already said that whoever wins the, if Shogun wins the Brandon Vera fight, he automatically gets a, a, a fight with uh, John Bones Jones. Uh-huh. And I personally don't see it that way because we have two light, two light heavyweight uh, fights with the top people, and I think basically it's going to come down to the most exciting of these two of these two fights. That's probably going to bring out the next fighter. And let's not forget that Dan Henderson is going to fight uh, John Bones Jones in September. And I don't take um, and people say he's old and this and that, but he's someone you should never underestimate as Dan uh, as Dan Henderson. And oh, if any, oh, oh, oh. hmm. You mean to tell me that that uh, whoever fights, whoever comes out with the title shot. Well, yeah, it's 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 basically going to say who brings the best <laughs> fight. I mean, say yeah. if Shogun plays that it it's safe on this fight and and wins it just by decision, you actually think that they're going to want that kind of a fighter or that kind of a fight to go to. They're looking. I mean, they put two light heavyweights as the main event and co-main event. And yeah. each one of these are the top contenders. So I would yeah. say whoever wins it the most exciting and does it in the most fashionable and most exciting way is probably going to end up getting whoever wins the next fight with um, Dan Henderson or John Bones. Yeah. And, and you know what? Um, it's interesting that you say it. Um, since since uh, his announcement that uh, the winner between Shogun and Brandon Barra was, was in the title shot, uh, mm-hmm. they won the back and pedaled it. And pretty much said exactly what you said. Um, whoever comes out as victor in both uh, light heavyweight pairing uh, and does so in a more impressive and entertaining fashion will be awarded the light heavyweight title shot. Uh, so, to face either Dan Henderson or John Jones. Yeah, so we'll go to the the main event, and that's a uh, Mauricio Shogun Hua, and it's going to be against Brandon the Truth Vera. Um, where do you see, or who do you see actually winning that fight? Mariso <laughs> Chogun. I think I think uh, I think this is a, a fun fight, um, mostly because it's one side. You know, it, it's, it's a bit of a guilty pleasure to yeah. just kind of know that we're gonna probably see the finish. Um, I think that I, I'm really glad that Dana White made the decision that he made to go ahead and say whoever's more impressive between you know the four fighters because. Um, well, I don't know. I, I think that kind of plays into Shogun's hand because Brandon Vera is just all around, you know, light heavyweight underachiever. You know, since yeah. He left the UFC for a while. Um, he hasn't earned his way back to a title shot. Yeah, he and, earned um, it. I mean, he was going through a horrible loss, but that was when he was in heavyweight, and uh, him going down has made a significant difference in in his speed and and. The last fight was kind of boring, but, you know, he's earned those points up to go and, you know, knock on that door and say, you know, he, all these, these four guys are not young guys anymore. This is their last kind of their hurrah of trying to get a, a uh, belt. Yeah, but I, I, I think the last time that I, I really saw Brandon Barrett shine was against Michael Pat. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And... Um, and that's where you're just chopping him down, like, it's over and over and over. And, you know, we saw Brandon Vera kind of get comfortable in that fight. And, and really, we, we saw how crisp his Muay Thai can be. Because Brandon Vera really does have, I dare say, cleaner Muay Thai than Shogun. Mm-hmm. Shogun, Shogun has, has good footwork, his really good leg kicks and everything. But his hands are really sloppy. Um, I don't think Brandon Vera has the experience to go out there. I don't think he's going to be comfortable out there. I think it's, you know, it's, it's not a good welcome back for Brandon Vera. I, yeah. I just think he's going to become a little bit overwhelmed. And if, I think I think if he if he found comfort in the octagon against Shogun and Shogun decided he wanted to stand with him, we could actually probably see a pretty dynamic uh, Muay Thai. Uh, that, that's what I was going to say. If anything else, like you said, it's a guilty pleasure thing. Uh, uh, the thing I find enjoyable is there's going to be two great Muay Thai fighters in the ring, so there's going to be a lot of leg kicks, a lot of... The, I, I don't see this fight really going to the ground at all. It's... But Shogun yeah. has that, that that strength, man, and when he's... 
when he's uh, on the attack, you know, that's when those people go, uh, it's lights out for them. Yeah. And you know what? Shogun really does have <laughs> mysterious power. Yeah. Shogun, like, like I said, his boxing, uh, the guy throws a pretty mean uppercut. I'll admit yeah. that. He, he manages to find a way to get on the inside of his uppercut despite the fact that kind of telegraphs sometimes. But aside from that, he wins a lot of his punches. I, mean, I don't really feel like his point is, is super developed in, you know, as far as his hands go. Mm-hmm. Like, he, he's really good with the tummy plumb. He throws really great leg kicks. Um, but, like, look at the way that he hits Chuck Liddell. Yeah. He hit him with this weird, like, leaping, winging punch that kind of just hit Liddell. I, I mean, it really didn't look like it should have knocked him down. Maybe it was a combination of, of mm-hmm. Liddell being off balance, and then, he, you know, he did finish him with hammer fits on the ground. But then look at how he hit Leo to Machida in the rematch. And, I mean, he timed it well. I don't want to say that that wasn't premeditated. It was smart. He, he uh... He baited the uh, the straight left from Machida with a leg kick, and right when Machida threw it, he threw his overhand right over Machida's arm and then ducked under the punch and made contact. But it just didn't land clean. But it still rocked Machida's, Machida's world. You know what I mean? So yeah, Shogun definitely packs a punch. He's faster. He packs, you know, despite his his drawbacks that I think a lot of people are hesitant to admit in the stand up, um, Shogun he just has more tools. For and I think that it's, it's really kind of the, the whole situation where the more exciting winner gets the title shot definitely plays in the show and hands in the situation because he's, he's going to be on a big stage, he's mm-hmm. going to be on free TV, and he's going to have a warm body in front of him, which is Brandon Barrow. And I think he's going to turn it on and really see you know, this opportunity to earn himself in a title shot. And I think this is the kind of fight that uh, people have been waiting for, uh, especially for Fox since that big. Uh, that Cain Velasquez fight last time, you know, where he got knocked out pretty fast, is yeah. this one's actually a really stacked card, and it probably, it probably could have sold as a pay-per-view. I, mean, I would buy it, yeah. Yeah, I would, I would, you know, and just to have Mike Swift coming back, and, you know, Nam fans also, also fighting, he was one of the ultimate fighters against Cole Miller, and th- that's kind of an intriguing fight, too. Because he uh, Nam fans stepping up into you know the top level, and I don't see him winning Cole Miller, but you know it, that should be a fun fight to watch. Yeah, I think. Um, oh, sorry, I need to plug in my laptop. Um, as for Nam fan and Cole Miller, I think that's going to be a fun fight to watch. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm excited to see Nam fan rip to the body. I <laughs> love the way the guy throws body punches. Um, for me, I, I'm not really sure where I lead in that regard. Um, I think they're pretty even on the ground. I mean, Nan Fan is a uh, black belt, just Jiu Jitsu. Mm-hmm. Um, there's always been a lot of question marks around, you know, real Jiu Jitsu credentials. I, I'm not the kind of guy to sit back and question any guy. I think Cole Miller's a straight res- wrestling pedigree, right? Cole Miller, yeah, well, I mean, Cole Miller's a brown belt. Oh, he's a Jiu Jitsu. Oh, yeah. Um, so uh, it's a bit of a pick em for me. I, I think that um, I think this is another one of those uh, loser lose town matches. I think uh, I think we're gonna. There's the lighter weights are a bit saturated right mm-hmm. now. Uh, I think they they really boosted their, their uh, roster a lot. They were introduced in the lighter weight class in the UFC. Now I think they have a little bit of fat and trim. I don't really want to see either guys go. So <laughs> I, I don't. I'm not sure if I can. I think I'm going to go with Nam Fan. Oh, you're going to go with Nam Fan? So that's yeah. probably the one we're going to disagree on. I'm actually going to go for Cole Miller on that one. So uh, we're going to wrap it up. And so let's go down the line. And um, you said John is a Moraga. And Ulysses Gomez, who do you see winning? I got uh, Ulysses Gomez. And I have Ulysses as well. Manny Gambarian and get a versus, and I'll let you say it. Uh, I'll have uh, Michi Hero and Gawa. You're going to go for Michi? Uh, yeah. yeah, I don't like. I'm probably gonna go with him because I don't. I don't know that much about him, but I know Manny Kambirian is a very sloppy kind of fighter, and any probably wrong moving, he's gonna go. Uh, let's see. Is it Ollie Thompson? Uh, Ollie Thompson and yeah. Philip DeFries. Uh, Philip DeFries. I'm oh, DeFries. I don't. I know somewhere between the neighborhood of shit all and nothing about either of these guys. Um, 
Yeah, and one of them even has a sure dog, just a black photo, so there's not even an update of what this guy looks like. Yeah. So, uh, um, is it Ronnie Yaha and Josh Grisby? Ronnie Yaha, yeah. Um, I know that one. He actually has like a couple uh, fights of the night. That dude's a straight wizard. Yeah. Um, Josh Grisby was um, kind of Josh Grisby, not that far away, far removed from, from contendership uh, in the featherweight division. Yeah. Um, I think he. I mean, he's on a bit of a losing streak right now. He's the whole two against uh, George Ruth and Dustin Jorge. But, um, I, I, yeah, I think uh, as long as he, if it goes to the ground, he can stay on top against Honey uh, Aya. It's really the only place where he's going to be in the camera temperature. And the next one is going to be the Phil Davis versus uh, Wagner Prado. Uh, yeah, I mean, Phil Davis is something I mean, if anyone wants to get some crazy money, I mean, really dare it. Wants to pick Wagner Prado for the upset, you can find Phil Davis in like plus 600 on some website. Yeah, Phil Davis. So, yeah. <laughs> we already said the Cole Miller and Nam Fan one, and Mike Swift versus uh, Demarcus Johnson. I'm going to go uh, Demarcus Johnson. I'm going to go Mike Swift, so we disagree on that one. Uh, Jamie Varner versus Joe Loazzo. Uh, Joe, I got, uh, I think I'm going to go Joe Loazzo. I have Joe as well. And uh, Ryan Bader versus Leoto. We said Leoto. I got Machida. And oh no, uh, and Machida. And then um, both of us are going to agree as well on the on Shogun. Yeah, hard not. All right, so we're going to end this show. This is our first one. Uh, go ahead and download it on iTunes tomorrow. Uh, Kenny, can they follow you? Uh, you on Twitter? Uh, I have a Twitter account. I I never use it. Um, so, no. <laughs> if you want, right. yeah, if you add, want to add me on Twitter, it's uh, at Undertone. Um, and uh, follow me on Facebook if you want. I don't really have much interest in it. Uh, look at follow Werebear, uh, Facebook.com, Werebear559. Yeah, my bad. So check those out. And do you guys have any uh, upcoming shows? Uh, yes, we do. Um, let me pull up our page so I can push them to. I never keep track of our videos. Oh, we'll just put it on the on our. I'll put it on the website for people to know. Uh, you guys yeah. can follow me on uh, just Screaming Rebel at Screaming Rebels at on uh, Twitter, and then we also have a fan page, uh, Screaming Rebels Productions on Facebook. You guys can go ahead and like that. Um, thank you, uh, Kenny. We're gonna be probably we'll discuss which one we're gonna do next, and then uh, good night for everybody else. Bye. Good night. Bye.